Hello and welcome back to Thermodynamics 2 Tutorials with Maria. We're going to be solving a Rankine circuit with reheat. We are asked to consider a simple Rankine circuit with two reheat process where their steam is going to enter at a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius with a pressure of 3 megapascal and it's going to leave with a pressure of 10 kilopascal. The first reheat process is performed at 1200 kilopascal and it's going to bring the steam to a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. Then a second reheat process is performed at a pressure of 800 kilopascal and it's going to bring the steam to a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius. We are asked to sketch the TS diagram and to find the thermal efficiency. So our process diagram, this is going to be our condenser where the liquid is going to exit and go to the pump where the pressure is going to increase and the compressed fluid is going to enter the boiler. In the boiler, the temperature is going to increase in order to have a phase change and the fluid is going to leave as steam in order to enter the turbine. In a simple rack and cycle, after the expansion, the isentropic expansion of the turbine, the steam is sent back to the condenser. In reheat system, different turbines are added to increase the, to improve the efficiency. In our case, since we have a two reheat process, we're gonna have three turbines. Therefore, in a reheat system, after the expansion of, of the first turbine, the steam is sent back to the boiler. It's heated up to reach the superheated state before being sent to the expansion of the next turbine. This is our first reheat process. And then again, we're gonna have the steam of the second turbine going to the boiler where the temperature is gonna increase before being sent back to the last turbine. And then the steam is gonna enter, is gonna leave the um, turbine and it's gonna be sent to the condenser. This is gonna help us to draw our temperature versus entropy diagram. I'm going to call uh, number one after the condenser, two after the pump, three after the boiler. We know that after the condenser, since it's before our pump, we're going to be at our low pressure. That's going to be my low pressure line. I'm going to have one here. Then we're going to go to the high pressure due to the pump. We're going to go to the high pressure. Then in the boiler, we're going to increase temperature at a constant pressure. So it's going to be three. Then we're going to go through the expansion of the first turbine. And then the steam is going to leave the boiler at five. So pressure at four and five is the same. So we're going to have another pressure line. So we're going to have the expansion of the first turbine. That's going to be four. And then this, this steam is going to increase in temperature to five. Then it's going to leave the second turbine at six. We're going to have the expansion of the second turbine. It's going to enter the boiler. The steam is going to leave the boiler again to go to the third turbine at seven. So we're going to have a third pressure for the um, turbine. And then after five, we're going to have the expansion. So we're going to go to the low pressure at six. Then we're going to go up in temperature at seven. And then we're going to go back to the condenser at eight. And then after the condenser, we're going to the pump. So now that we have draw our TS diagram and our process uh, diagram, we're going to go see what are the values that are given. We are told that the steam is going to enter at 400 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 3 megapascal. That means it's going to enter the first turbine. The highest pressure is 3 megapascal. And we are told that it's going to leave at 10 kilopascal. So it's going to leave the system at 10 kilopascal. So that means that pressure at 3 it's 3 megapascal. We know that the pressure at 2 and 3 are the same, so we can draw 
put it down here. We know that the steam is going to enter at 400 degrees Celsius, so that means the temperature at 3 is going to be 400 degrees Celsius. The temperature at 8 is going to be 10 kilopascal, and we know that that's going to be the same pressure at 1. So that's the same pressure at 1. Pressure at 1 and 8 are on the same pressure line. And then in the first uh, reheat process, the pressure is 1200 kilopascal and it's going to bring the steam to 400 degrees Celsius. So we recall we that the first process, reheat process, is when the steam is going to leave the first turbine, it's going to get reheated and go back to the next turbine. So that means 4 and 5. So 4 and 5, the pressure is 1200 kilopascal and the temperature at 5 is going to be 400 degrees Celsius. So we know that the pressure at 5 is equal to pressure at 4, and the pressure at 4 is going to be 1,200 kilopascal. Then in the second reheat process, the pressure is 800 kilopascal, and it's also going to bring the steam to 400 degrees Celsius. So again, 6 and 7 is the second reheat process, and that is going to be at 800 kilopascal, and the temperature at 7 is going to be 400 degrees Celsius. The pressure at 7 is equal to pressure at 8, at 6, and the pressure at 6 is going to be 800 degrees Celsius. So this is what we have. Now let's go back to the question of the thermal efficiency. So we know it's going to be the output over the input, so it's going to be the work net over the heat in. What is the work net? It's going to be the sum of the work of all the turbines, so it's going to be work of turbine 1 plus work of turbine 2 plus the work of the turbine 3. In our case, we can neglect the work of the pump. We have already seen that the work of the pump is very small compared to the work of the turbine, so it can be neglected. And the heat in, we're going to have the primary uh, heat in, so I'm going to call that boiler, but we're also going to have the heat in for each reheat process. I'm going to call that reheat 1 plus a heat reheat 2. If we put in the entropy, it's going to be equal to H3 minus H4 plus the work of the turbine 2 is going to be H5 minus H6. No, that's minus. So H5 minus H6 plus the H7 minus H8. This is for the third turbine. Over the entropy of the boiler, so that's going to be H3 minus H2, plus the heat input for the first uh, process, so it's going to be H5 minus H4, plus the heat input for the second reheat, which is going to be H7 minus H6. We have the questions, we need to find all the entropies. H for 3, 5, and 7, they can be obtained directly from the, from the table since we have the temperature and pressure. Uh, at point 1, we know the pressure since we know it's in the same pressure line as 8. And we know it's a saturated liquid, which means that the quality is equal to 0. So from the tables, we can also obtain the uh, entropy. For the entropy at 2, we have the pressure, so what we can do is use the pump equation. We have the temperature at 3 and the pressure at 3, so we know that the temperature is going to be 400 degrees Celsius and the pressure is going to be 3 MPa. From the tables, we're going to obtain an entropy at 3 of 3200 31.7 kilojoule per kilogram and an entropy at 3 of 6.9235 kilojoule per kilogram. We can do the same at 5, so we know that at 5 the temperature is going to be 400 degrees Celsius and the pressure is going to be 1200 kilopascal. So that's going to give us an entropy at 5 of 
0.3 kilojoule per kilogram. And the entropy is going to be 7.3793 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. The same we do for 0.7. So the temperature at 7 is again 400 uh, degrees Celsius. And the pressure is going to be 800 kilopascal, so that's 0 0.8 uh, megapascal. That's going to give us an enthalpy of 3,267.7 3, kilojoule per kilogram, and an entropy of 7.5735 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. At point one, we said that we know the pressure, so we know that at point one it's going to be 10 kilopascal. And we know that it's a saturated liquid, so that x is zero, a saturated liquid. So from the tables, we can find that H1 is going to be equal to 191.81 kilojoule per kilogram. And then we said that in order to find the enthalpy at 2, we're going to use the pump equation. So we're going to need the specific volume. The specific volume is going to be equal to the 0 0.00101 meters cubed per kilogram. So what is the work of the pump? The work of the pump we know is going to be the difference of enthalpy, so H2 minus H1, but it's also going to be equal to the specific volumes uh, time the pressure change, 2 minus P1. We have the specific volume, we have the pressure at 2, and we have the pressure at 1. We have the enthalpy at 1 that we just found. So we can find the enthalpy at 2. It's going to be equal to the specific volume times the pressure change plus the enthalpy at 1. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.00101 meter cube per kilogram times the pressure at 2 that is going to be 3,000 um, kilopascal minus the pressure at 1 which is 10 kilopascal plus the enthalpy at 1 that we just find plus 191.81 kilojoule per kilogram that is going to give us an enthalpy at 2 of 194.83 kilojoule per kilogram. Now we're going to look for the enthalpy at 4. So what we have at 4, we have the pressure, but we also know the entropy is going to be constant uh, in the first turbine. So that means that S4 is equal to S3, and S3 we have previously calculated. And we also have the pressure at 4. So from the tables, we can obtain the H4. So I'm going to do it once completely, and then the rest you can do it yourself. So we can obtain the value. So it's going to be 0 0.0335 minus 6.8313 over 3,046.3 minus 2,935.6 equals to 6.9235 minus 6.8313 over H4 minus 2,935.6 and then once you do the interpolation, you can find a value of H4 of 2,986.08 kilojoule per kilogram. And I do the same for state 6. Isentropic expansion, so S6 is equal to S5. Pressure at 6 is 800 kilopascal. And if we do the interpo interpolation, we're going to find an enthalpy at 6 of 3,143.43 
kilojoule per kilogram. And now at point eight, we know the entropy and the pressure, so we can do the same. We know that the entropy at eight is equal to the entropy at seven, and we have the pressure at eight is gonna be 10 kilopascal. And going to the tables, finding the values, and doing the interpolation, we're gonna find an entropy at eight of 2,444 kilojoule per kilogram. Now that we have found out the entropies, let's plug in all the numbers and solve for the thermal efficiency. So the thermal efficiency is gonna be equal to H3, 3,231.3, minus the entropy at four, which we found is gonna be, it was 2,986.08, plus the entropy at five, which is 3,261.3, minus the entropy at six, which is 3,143.43, plus H7, which is equal to 3,267.7 minus the entropy at A that we found 2,400 over entropy at three, 3,231.3 minus the entropy at two, which is 194, 0.83 plus the entropy at 5, which is 3,261.3 3, minus the entropy at 4, which is 2,986.08 plus the entropy at 7, which is 3,267.7 minus the entropy at 6 which is 3,143.43. And if we calculate uh, all these numbers, we're gonna obtain a thermal efficiency of 0 0.358 or 35.8%.